Hello everyone, I'm Kim Crable on set with the Coffee with Kim show. We're back in California filming a brand new series. You're not going to believe who's stopping by for coffee. Come on in, join us. And I've got the joy deep down in my heart. I'm waking up with your love from the start. I'm chasing the rainbow through the rain. I know it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be a beautiful day. I have to begin today's show by admitting that I'm not sure how to properly introduce today's guest. I can tell you that she's the first woman to be nominated for Oscars both in front of and behind the camera. And that's only one of the many prestigious honors awarded to her. But that's not why I long to have her join us today. I can tell you that she starred in TV, theater, and her own musical stage act. And she's written music in a best-selling memoir. But again, that's not really why I dared to invite her to coffee. I can tell you the many ways she is consumed with helping others. She serves on numerous national boards, those which serve children and foster many health care needs, those dedicated to helping with the recovery of missing and exploited children, she is the national spokesperson for Big Brothers and Big Sisters of America, and she devotes time and energy to the California Special Olympics. But there again, that's not really my why to today's program. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee, Conversations of Friends of Faith to Encourage and Equip. I'm Kim Crable, your host. Are you wondering how any one human can be so accomplished and yet remain so compassionately engaged in doing so much good? Well, maybe that's the secret, is not in who she is, but rather in what she does. Her why is so passionately involved in so many wonderful aspects of life. Maybe it's simply because she is so wonderful. Now that's why I long to have her with us today because she is so graciously said yes to my invitation. When we get back, we'll have sitting with us live and in person, the one and only, the beautiful and brilliant, Diane Cannon. Kim Crable knows all about hidden shame and regret. From the time she experienced a life-altering trauma at age four, Kim became an expert in hiding her hurt and confusion. The trick she discovered was to sing a little louder in church and to smile a little wider with friends. In her transparent story, Burdens to Blessings, Kim invites you along the journey from shame and sadness towards healing and hope. In the process, you'll encounter the upside down truth that God uses you because of your hurt and uncertainty. Order your copy of Burdens to Blessings right away at Amazon.com or simply go to www.kimcrable.org and click on the shop button. Discover the confidence and courage to be you again and discover the power of your story. Along the way, you'll help other hurting people change their burdens to blessings. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee. Oh, what a day this is, because as promised, look who we have. Diane Cannon. Oh, you sweetheart. I'm so happy to be here. I am so delighted. I haven't seen you in so long. In so long. A year and a half, right? I know. Even though we text and we, we share prayer um, together. And yes, we do. That's really great. But we met in Baltimore. Yes. And, you know, I could go on and on about all that you've achieved. And maybe we should. <laughs> because you've achieved so much. But, you know, today I just wanted to sit with you and have our friends join us and just talk about some of the things that you've done and what it is that keeps you so, I mean, you are so involved in so much. And so many people get to a place where they just want to rest and retire. I don't even think that's in your, that, that's not even in your DNA. You know, um, my love, I've learned how to rest in action. Uh, I think that's important. I, I don't know what stopping means. I, my, my grandkids call me go-go. 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 <laughs> uh, it's just, there's, there's, one, there's one answer, one reason. It really is the Holy Spirit. It's God. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. And you know, 
if anybody's watching that says, oh, come on, don't give us that, and what is that all about? What? There's, a, there's something that's bigger than I am. I couldn't, I, I couldn't have done a quarter of what I seem to have done if I didn't understand that. See, Kim, I don't know about you, but it's not enough for me to have faith. Mm -hmm. It just isn't. I have to understand what I'm talking about. Yes. Does two and two make four, or does two and two make five? Now, if you tell me it makes five, <laughs> or four, and I think it makes five, mm -hmm. yeah, it has to make sense. Yes. And so I think in the times that we're living in today, uh, I, 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 I sense a chaos in the world. Yes. And an unrest, that word you were talking about, that I've never sensed before. Yes. And I think people are looking so desperately for something to hang on to that they understand yes. that's real. Yes. Don't throw purple powder at me and say it works miracles. They're looking, they're looking for a God that's real. That's what I love about you. It seems that even though I've only known you a couple of years, I feel like I've known you for so long because of the life that you've led as I read. And one of the things that I want people to understand from your life today is that you, in all that you've done and all that you've accomplished, you always found what you were doing as a platform for God your passion for him. I mean, take us back to some of the movies, Universal Studio. You would do what in your trailer out back? Bible studies? Yeah, right. Well, that was later. Yes. In the beginning, look, I understand what it is to hurt, and I understand what it is to fail, and I understand what it is to have anxiety. That's why I can help people. Yes. I work now with, with recovering addicts once a week. I understand what it is to think that what you need is outside of yourself. Yes. So those Bible studies and all those things happened later. On the way, in the beginning, I come from a home where I had a Jewish mother and I had a father who said, God who? Yeah. And he found Jesus who I didn't know was lost. <laughs> he said, I found Jesus. I said, what's that? They had agreed that we would be raised in a Jewish home. Mm -hmm. But on the way to the synagogue, after Daddy found Jesus, we used to sing, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. And I found that the rabbi didn't like that song as much as my daddy did. <laughs> so the home became split. Yes. And in order to please both Mom and Dad, I'd pray on my knees to please Daddy, and I'd pray standing up like they did in the synagogue. I sang in the synagogue, but I'd sing, Jesus Loves Me, with my Daddy, because mm -hmm. I wanted to please them both. Right. So my mission was to find out What's real? Yes. Instead of pleasing person right. or place or thing, what's real? So that was my goal, to find out what was real. How did you do that? Well, through a lot of trial and error, mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, pastors come on with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had people that weren't pastors tell me truths. And you know what, Kim? I, I don't know if this is a popular thing to say or not, but I don't believe in labels. Don't give me labels. Right. I love There's some that. Christians I want to be in the room with and some others that I don't want to know. Mm -hmm. the, the front of us ain't it. Yes. It's our soul. It's our heart. It's our character. It's our being. It's our truth. It's our life. It's our love. It's our passion. Mm -hmm. How did I do that? Through so many people mm -hmm. that loved me enough to tell me the truth when I would be acting crazy and... and uh, seeking, I tried everything. I tried drugs, I tried booze, I tried everything to try and find the truth, which is why I can now help so many people. I love that because you never gave up. You never. know, so many times people will get to a place and they just give up, um, but the search is long sometimes, isn't it? And and you just have to keep going. And and what you're saying, Diane, about, about you know, the what the world needs today, you know, let's talk about that for a minute because you see what's going on. What is our part as, as true believers who are not seeking to be, um, you know, celebrity believers or all these things that you're talking about, the labels? You know, how do we impact our world the way you've been impacting your world all these years? I think that the very best sermon is one without words. Mm. I think we have to live it. Yeah. 
I think we have to live it. Mm -hmm. Whether we're on a, a film set or in a grocery store or in a, a, a car alone or a car filled with, we have to live it. Mm -hmm. Live what? Live love. Personal love? Love that's filled with self? No. Mm -hmm. I've only found one love that fills me. And I've had, you know, I was married to Cary Grant. I was married to somebody else as well, loving, beautiful, kind men. But the only love I have found that filled me, that lasted, was God's love. Yeah. Well, Diane, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? <laughs> well, can I give you an example of what I mean? I would love, we would love to hear that. Just for a moment. Yes. Imagine that the sun is God. And all the rays that come from the sun are you and me. Now, we don't have light of our own, but the light comes from the sun. Mm -hmm. The power comes from the sun. If it's God, the love comes from the energy, the light, the passion, the purpose. Mm. But if we think that we have all that on our own, and as that ray of light that emanates from that power, I decide to go off here and dance on my own, what happens? Mm. You leave I that. lose the light. You leave that, yes. I lose the energy. Mm -hmm. I lose the love. I lose the passion. I lose the purpose. The anointing, the significance, that Meaning. feeling of peace. That's right, that feeling of peace. So you're saying, which I love, is that we have to stay in line with what God says rather than what we think or the world is telling us. If we, yes. And that's where, don't you think that we're so messed up, is that we're trying to find this peace in all these other things that the world, you know, how many people we have likes on Facebook, who our friends are. It just seems like it, everything's gotten so twisted, Diane. It is. I've never seen this in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I've never seen what I'm seeing now. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a lonely, desperate place to be and to live, right? Yeah. It's a, but you know. But yet you stay so filled with energy. I do. And so much joy. I do. And you're always singing. <laughs> so that source is springing up from within you. That's what we need. What, tell us, what are your secrets of staying that? Because not only is the world kind of crazy, but you have involved yourself in a lot of areas where there's some deep needs and there's hurt and pain. Um, and, and so you're, you're throwing yourself into these areas where it's really sad, but yet you still have such a, I, I wore my orange today because it made me think of you, oh, just so vibrant sweet. and joyful and happy. <gasps> where do you go, Diane Cannon, when you are starting to feel, what is, what's your secret? I had that kind of day yesterday. <laughs> it just seemed like everything. I had to take my car back to the car wash twice. <laughs> I had it washed, then I went home, then I had to take it back, then I had to take it back again. It just, everything I did just seemed to, and I started to get caught up in it. It's easy to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I just made myself get quiet. Mm -hmm. And I turned inside, because all this was happening outside of me. Yes. And I turned inside, and I said, God, I praise you. There's a lot of junk going on, but God, I just praise you. And if you want me to know that you're real right here in this moment, make yourself known because I don't feel good. I do not feel good. I feel lousy. And all these things are happening around me. Why aren't you taking over? Why aren't you taking over? And I heard, be still and know that I am God. Mm. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> God has a nice way terms. of saying it. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes it isn't easy. Let's be real. Sometimes right. it's a real struggle. Yes. But there is a place to go. Yes. There's a place to go. Yes. Absolutely. Not out there. Yes. And the last place we look for it is inside. Yes. We keep thinking that love is out there. We keep thinking that job's, that car, that dress, that man, that woman, that, right? Yes. Be still. Yes. Shut up, Diane. <laughs> Be still. I love that. I've read that. Be still and know that I am God. 
be still and know, be still, and then be. be. Yes, be. That's a hard thing for uh, we Americans to do, isn't it? Just, just be, be still in his presence. But, but getting back to something but that But that's you, the answer. I know. So, you know, learning math is hard too. <laughs> There's a lot of things that are hard. Yes. But this has a practical answer in the moment. Yes. And if it doesn't come in the moment, stay in it. Yes. I've walked the floor in the middle of the night insisting that that pain wasn't real. And it turned out not to be. Well, yeah, I remember that on set. Yes, I remember. I couldn't walk. They had to carry me to and from the set. Yes, so for our, our friends that are watching, uh, what happened was you were making a movie just a couple years ago. Besides all the other things you're doing, you're still making movies. And there was a fall. I think someone put something in front of you that caused you to trip or something. Well, that's a long story, yeah, but I yeah, fell. Yeah, and, um, and On they, the pavement, yeah. And they thought that you had a fractured hip, but you just refused it. I mean, you just, and it turned out that. And I had to crawl. I had to crawl. I couldn't walk. Yes. But under that power. Yes. It's a power, Kim. It's a power. Yes. It's not just a word. Yes. It's not just a. Words, you can you can use words, but it's a power. It's real. It's how I live. It's how I breathe. I love what you said, Diane, when you said, you know, I was struggling, and I said, God, I need you to be real right in this moment for me. There's so many times when I feel that way, where it's like, God, I just need I need your presence. I wonder how many people who are listening today that have truly never felt that presence. Can you, can you explain, what, what would someone do? I mean, how did you come to know the Lord? Because that's really what it's all about, right? All of this begins by having a relationship with God, by inviting Him into our lives, by, by knowing that we belong to His family. Well, I will tell you uh, that when I left home, I didn't want anything to do with God. I'd seen so much fighting and so much friction in the home and so much division mm -hmm. that I just, I didn't want to know God. I just, don't, just, don't talk to me about God, but God, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm not going to let you go that easy, Diane. Yeah. So through, I just, I was led. I was led to go to Bible studies. I was led to go to, because it's inside us. That yearning for peace yes. means we already have it. Yes, that's right. right? That yeah. yearning for harmony, that yearning for that, that something means we already have it. It's already inside us. Mm -hmm. The world just keeps saying it's outside of us. Mm -hmm. Boy, if we could just get that one straight, it would be so much easier. I'm wagging my Laker ring. This is a championship I Laker know. ring. <laughs> I know. You are a huge Lakers fan. <laughs> yeah. And then That's, I sit there and I pray for the Lakers. That is, this year, God, we didn't do it this year. <laughs> <laughs> that is a huge ring. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the larger one the than men's your wear. waist. I, I saw my hand shaking and waving. But um, So you're just interested in everything. Oh, my you gosh. Love I am. life. I'm interested in everything and, and it everyone. It makes, makes me think of the scripture that God did not come just to give us life, but the abundant life. We are all seeking the abundance. Tell, tell our friends, I mean, what, how, what, how do they find the abundance? Diane, I feel like there's so many people who are just walking around with these plastic smiles, with these plastic, you know, with these hurts so embedded in their hearts. And, you know, there is freedom in Christ, isn't there? I was in a hotel in Philadelphia in the lobby, checking in and laughing, and the manager came out and he said, thank you. I said, for what? He said, it's been so long since I've heard anyone laugh. Mm about that. Kim, come on. God's most organic type of medicine. The joy of the Lord is, is my, my strength. strength. Those aren't just words. Right, right. You know, there was stuff going on last night and I didn't sleep a lot, just a couple hours. And I thought, oh, I'm doing the show today. But the joy, just because you don't sleep doesn't go. You can use it as an excuse. Right. If you want. Right, right. But Joy is what inspires and illuminates and elevates and mm -hmm. 
-hmm. all those words. <laughs> yeah, all those words. <laughs> Tell you, what are you most proud of when you think about, I mean, you're still doing so much and you have so much, so much more to do, but what are you most proud of? Because you've done so much. Oh, gosh. I think um, yielding to God is the thing I'm proudest of. Oh. Because I'm a real rebel. I got in trouble in school. I was a real rebel most of my life, and I, I wanted to break all the rules. And uh, I thought that was, I didn't like the rules. I didn't like the rules. I, I want freedom. I thought freedom was breaking the rules. Mm. So because I had such a strong human will, mm -hmm. I think that the yielding of that is the thing that I get happiest about. I don't know if I'd use the word proud or pride, but I'm happiest about that because it's reaped such fruit in my life, mm -hmm. in every aspect of my life, with friends and work and family and friends. And is it always easy? Come on. Mm -hmm. Am I always joyous? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. You no, seem to be. But well, of course, yeah, of for course the most the part, right. my friends call me a happy woman, and I am a happy woman. Yes. But are there moments? You bet. Yes. Yesterday. Yes. But I was able to get back, and it was heavy on me. And all of a sudden at home, I started dancing. And I thought, thank you, Lord. That's the Lord. Yeah. yeah. These aren't just words. That's this the, is real. Well, and that, that's, that's the yearning of my heart. And that's why we do these shows. It's because I want to extend our TV, to our TV friends people like you who are what I call the real deal. You know, that you live it, you love it, you truly love the Lord, and you love those around you. And it helps us maybe to be encouraged. It inspires us to look around in our world because you may have been on a TV set, a movie set. You were doing all these incredible things, but in it, you were serving the Lord. And so what you are saying to us is no matter where we are, we can have that same joy if we serve the Lord. It's not about where, you, where we are, it's what we're doing. Is that right? It's how we're doing what we're doing and the thought behind it. The motive, yes. The motive. Yes. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but God checks the motive is yes. what it says in Proverbs. That's yeah. right. So it's keeping, the Bible says, happy is the man whose mind is stayed on me because yes. he trusteth in me. Yes. And that's where my trust is, that's where my joy is, that's where my peace is. And if I seem to come away from that, if I seem to forget that, <laughs> yeah. I'm reminded real quick and because I can feel the difference. And that's, that's the Lord just because of his love. We have to take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to ask you to just share with our audience, just give them a word, a special word. Everybody would like a special word from Diane Cannon. Just a special word to our audience to encourage them on joy when we get back, okay? Sure. We'll be right back. Okay. Burdens to Blessings with Kim Crable is a program that challenges women to discover the confidence and courage to stop hiding and show their true self to God and others. Because when you are real with God and each other about the hurts and regrets you carry, you will be showered with opportunities to help other hurting people change their burdens into blessings. For me, it's been a place where you can just go and feel um, welcome, feel safe, um, feel like you can tell the group anything and nobody's gonna judge, nobody's gonna laugh. Um, people are gonna nod and say, I've been there, I've you know, been through the same things. Um, you just feel like you're not alone. It's an opportunity to understand that you're not alone. You're not unique going through life, unhappy or sad or hurt or, you know, we're all, we're all in it together. We're all going through something. And it's an opportunity to open that, open that door into the room you closed 15 years ago and peek into it and express how it's affecting you and what it feels like in a very safe, loving environment. And I think everyone can benefit from just a pure human perspective 
to say, what is it that we struggle with as humans, not as Buddhists, not as Catholics, not as Christians, not as, you know, Baptists, but as humans. We're all in different parts of our journey and different struggles, but that um, we do experience a lot of the same things and that can bring us together instead of walking in judgment of each other. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee. Well, we knew this was going to be a show that went by incredibly fast. Diane Cannon, thank you so much for stopping by to meet with us and to share just who you are and your wisdom. You know, I just sit and soak it in, and I know that I have a lot of friends out there who would just love to have a special word from you living in the midst of the chaos, just a, just a word of calmness into their heart today. Wherever you are, however you are, if you're hurting, if you just can't seem to find peace, if you're looking for something, something out there to give you that sense of, of harmony, that sense of love, that sense of peace, that sense of it's going to be okay. You know what I'd like you to do? Just right where you are right now, standing or sitting, just ask God, God, if you're real, if you're real, let me feel your presence right here, right now. If you have a power, if you are the power, if you are the source of that power, if you are the source of that love, let me feel it right here, right now. And I promise you, if you're sincere, if you mean it, feel it. Oh. You're going to feel it. In Jesus' name, we pray this. Oh. Amen. Amen. Oh, Diane, thank you so much for coming. You know how much I love you. I just can't thank Diane Cannon enough for being someone to whom we can all aspire to be like, to live with such diligence and intentionality, with such courage and confidence as with such a steadfast, Christ-based conviction. She exemplifies a life to which we can all have, one filled with hope and joy. And she has shown us that we each can have such a life, no matter where we find ourselves today, because it's not about what we're doing, but the why. Mm -hmm. Diane has reminded us that joy comes from not just trying to fill in the minutes of each day, but rather to live out the ministry to which God has called each and every one of us. That's why I long to have my friend here today. Her wisdom is what this world needs. I love this lady so very much. Mm. Thank you, Diane, for joining us. And thank you, friends, for being with us. Until next time.